I want to welcome to the show today, Mark Savant. Most dads won't read a book or take parenting classes. The Act of Dad Awesome Dad Show highlights awesome dads and inspires men's, men to be better fathers. Mark Savant is the host of the Act I Dad podcast, and he interviews NFL players, presidential candidates, doctors, influencers, and more. We are living through unprecedented times. The internet and technology are changing the way the world operates. We must evolve our skill sets to remain relevant and provide for our, our families. Many people do a job they hate and live for the weekend. Mark is aiming to build a lifestyle that he's excited about every day. I am so excited to talk to you today, Mark. Welcome. Thank you, Jody. I'm glad to be here. So I love this, you know, that whole idea of, you know, people living in jobs that they hate, lifestyles that they hate, not living, you know, intentionally or, or not living in a way that they feel the satisfaction and enjoyment with their life. Like I 100% like that's why I started this whole journey. <laughs> I wanted to make that kind of shift and also show families that there is a possibility that you can take control of your lifestyle. So yes. tell us more about how you got started with this, this journey of the Act of Dad podcast and, and talking about this concept of, of being intentional about your lifestyle. Sure. So my origination story is pretty similar to yours. Yeah. I graduated from college down here at Florida Atlantic University in South Florida with my wife, got my degree, started working, was making good money very happy with the amount of money. I was actually, I actually was working with my family as well. So there's a lot of benefits there. A lot of flexibility being with your family is, is, is definitely important to me. Mm -hmm. I have a three and a half year old daughter and a nine month old son now. About two years ago, I, I came to this realization that I was not satisfied with where my life was at, right? I was paying my bills. I didn't want for anything. Paying home, home, everything was getting paid off right. on time. So I was, I was very happy with that. Um, but I continue to lie, lie to myself to say, I don't really deserve better. Everything mm -hmm. is in order. My life is in order. I don't deserve better. I've made mistakes in the past. I'm where I'm at now. I don't deserve better. And I took my wife and kid at this time was my daughter out to, di to dinner. And I ended up snapping at the waitress for something small, something small something that wasn't on the menu that I wanted. So I snapped at the waitress and someone at the table next to us made a remark to me about how rude I was being. And it was kind of Ouch. like an aha moment. It was a wake up moment. And so I talked to my wife a little bit about it. And I came to this realization that there's no reason that I have to be in the space where I'm distributing negativity to those around me. And that was kind of the turning point, the tipping point where I said, I need to do something different with my life. Because mm. you're, even though you were quote unquote satisfied, right? You were like, everything was going okay. You had your needs met. But at the same time, wh what, was, what would you say was that lie that you were telling yourself then? Well, I think it's that my financial needs are being met, mm. right? But personally not satisfied with my work. I mean, I think this story manifests itself amongst the population every day. You're going to a job where you make six figures, but you go home feeling exhausted and like your soul is being sucked out. You're living for the weekend. You're not excited for Monday. Yeah. You're getting passed up for it opportunities. Gosh, I remember, I'm not gonna name the retail establishment, but I was working this retail establishment. I was, I would say one of the better employees there. I showed up, I was knowledgeable about every department. I had good relationships. I led a volunteer effort. I, I was very involved with the company. And then when it, time, it came time to make a small step up to, from like a floor salesman to a supervisor, right. they brought in some outside guy who didn't know anyone, what? wasn't super knowledgeable. And yeah. I was like, I never want to have my life controlled by someone else. I want to take control. So wow. that was another, I think, life event that, that really resonated with me. Yeah, that, that hits hard. That's like, I, you know, you think you trust the people that you're working for and you've been trying to build up rapport with them and right. good relationships. And then it's like, oh, no, we're going to just stab you in the back and say, sorry, you, you didn't cut, make the cut. What? Right. <laughs> like, or they don't want to so promote you because then you're a threat to take their promotion, what? take their right. job. So they want to wow. keep the talent down. And it, that's one of the biggest 
I think problems with uh, that corporate mentality, that corporate lifestyle. But what's yeah. great, Jody, about what you're doing with, with your show and what I'm doing with the Awesome Dad Show is there's tools out there so that you can gain the flexibility to spend time with your family, but to also take, take that control of your life, to, to build your personal brand, to reach yeah. new people, to network. And, and that, I think, is probably the most important thing that we can be doing as parents in, in this day and age. Yeah, I, I 100%. Like, so that's the things that I want to help promote is that we are here to demonstrate for our children that they have more than one option. They don't have to just yes. climb the corporate ladder. You know, that's why I started this podcast because, well, at the time when I started, it was like, what is wrong with us? We're so miserable. <laughs> we, you know, we are, pay, may, you know, sort of making our bills um, most of the time, but you know, things like that are thinking, you know, we love each other. Why are we so miserable? Like what is going on? And after exploring this whole concept of the culture that we grew up in, with telling us there's just one path to success and we right. weren't making it. We You're following that blueprint that's been laid out and proven successful over the last 50 years, hundred years, the X factor is the internet. The internet changes everything. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. So we're, we're in unprecedented times right now, like you mentioned in my little intro there, and that we don't know what the future is going to hold. It's just paramount that you're building your own personal digital brand, that you're creating a framework for your kids to be successful and, and to see your success. So that's, that's so is I that, think, super important. Yeah, yeah. So is that what you basically talk about on the Awesome Dad podcast? Like you are working on, you know, giving dads the framework for how to make that shift. So the awesome dad show, (laughs) yeah, the the awesome dad show is a little bit, is a little bit different. When, when I became a father, I had a hard time finding a show or a podcast that I really enjoy. There were a lot of dad joke pages and dad memes. There, there were a lot of good parenting pages, but I would say it's 80% geared towards women, 20% towards Mm, the dads. So Mm -hmm. I wanted to build a very professional, well-produced, high-quality program and community focused on fatherhood specifically. So so dads felt like they had a home, somewhere that they could go and that would appeal to them. And I said, who would dads want to listen to? Most dads aren't going to read a book, but they might listen to their favorite NFL player or a political candidate that they like, or a public figure that they respect, a celebrity, they might listen to their story and maybe they'll be inspired to be a little bit better. Wow. And that's, yeah. kind, of, that's kind of where it started. And, and as I built up that community and I built up the show, it was fascinating because I would walk away from every episode with tips to, to help myself. And yeah. that became kind of my goal is how can I share these stories and walk away with value, valuable information that helps me be a better person, a better father. And it, it just kind of started resonating with people in the community. They say, well, they were learning too. They were learning along with me. And so it's been yeah. a really rewarding process. I like that because like you said, there's a lot of content out there for, for dads and for moms that's, that's kind of like almost making a mockery of like, oh, right. let's tease this culture of being a dad and having to deal with and survive through parenthood or, you know, things like that, that, Get you know, I- Get and the family yeah. <laughs> right. And it's like, okay, yeah, those are fun things to like joke around and laugh about. But at the end of the day, we still need to be parents. Like we ne- still need to have these like tactical strategies that is like, okay, my kid just had a total meltdown or my kid's facing mental illness or my kid's facing, you know, tragedy at schools and things like that. Right. It's, it's that's about, not yeah. a joke. Well, that's, that's <laughs> another big problem in that when you start looking at prison populations and mass violence and addiction, and you start connecting the dots, there's a very, very strong correlation between fatherlessness and these problems that are manifesting themselves amongst society. But again, if we could kind of change the narrative on, on what it means to be a father, yeah. I think that we can start to, to, to change the culture about, about how important the father is and, and help dads to be proud of their role in the household. Wow. So what is something that you talk about that is a narrative shift? What is, what is an important principle that we can tell our dads that what is, why is you know, fatherhood so important? What is one of your favorite, I guess, strategies or, or a mindset shift that you like to talk about? Well, time management for me is 
probably the most challenging part about being a parent in general. It, it, we all struggle with it. You're being pulled in 20 different ways. You're juggling all these hats. And so one of the things that I'm very passionate about, Jody, is finding ways to combine things that you love and enjoy. So for example, you need to exercise and you need to take care of yourself, right? So where does that hour slot into your day? Well, maybe I can go on a bike ride with my kids or I can go to the park and, and play soccer with them. Now I'm combining that quality time with my family along with my need to exercise and be healthy. So I'm always looking for different ways and insights from, from fathers and parents on how they're executing on those types of strategies. Wow. That's so awesome. So it's like, it's this balance between knowing that I have needs, but uh, my children also have needs. I need to be present with them and, and being able to, to not, it's not even a compromise. It's almost, it's really like synergistic because you're accomplishing both and you're meeting everybody's needs. I like that a lot. That's a really cool strategy. <laughs> get right. the, get both get both things in there because it, dad. Okay, so what is the definition of a good dad in your opinion? I mean, quote unquote. Nobody's like, yeah. okay, let me qualify that. Hold up, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like there's always like um um you see it a lot with moms like saying you know because there's a lot of mom guilt. There's a lot of and I know there's dad guilt. And, and it's like, um, there's a million ways to be a good mom or, or you're not going to, you know what I mean? There's, you're not sure. ever going to be the best mom or you're not ever going to be a perfect mom, but there's a million ways to be a, a good mom, right? There's, you're never going to be a perfect dad, but there's a million ways to be a good dad, right? Like, and so there's all, there's, that's what I wanted to say and qualify that question as, you know, that, right. that it's like, <laughs> okay. Well, I never... We, we, I never aim to be a parenting expert. I just, I hate right. that term. No, I me too. Me too. Like I, that's one of the things I'm like, this is not a parenting podcast, even though I'm in the parenting category or whatever, you know, it's like, I honestly believe that the shift that we need to make in our culture is that not that parenting is this like special thing that we have to figure out how to become an expert in it, because it's really just the narrative that we talk about, how we talk about parenting, how we talk about families, not to make them something that's like, apart from our day-to-day -day life or anything. Like yeah. if we just live consciously and live intentionally and prioritize our relationships, then it becomes integrated into those things that are important. Just like you said, if exercise is important to this, to this dad, then he's going to integrate his family into that because they are all, all important. Right. And we're going, wait, I got to balance all these things. It's not, a, it, no, it's not a question of balance. It's more a question of how do you integrate and how do you make these things a priority all like because it's part of who you are right yes yeah it's it's a constant balance it's challenging and every every family is different every child is different every parent's yeah. different so i don't think that you can just lay out a cookie cutter list of if you do these 21 things you're going to be a great dad and your right. kids are going to grow up to be well uh, well well formed human beings it's it's not it's not that simple right but i would say in order to be an act of dad the for me the probably the one core principle of being an active dad is that you need to give your kids attention. Kids just need attention. And we live in a, in a society and in a world now, a technological age where attention is being commoditized and it's yeah. being taken at every turn. I, I'll give you a perfect example that might resonate with you and your listeners here. The other day, I'm drinking my morning coffee on the front porch, which is something I've been doing to try to wake up in the morning because I have a hard time waking up in the morning. So I get up. My, my daughter wakes me up. It's 6.50, 7 a.m. Get up, coffee, go out front. So I'm sitting on the porch, and my daughter's just kind of playing quietly. I take out my phone. I'm starting to respond to emails, respond to comments, engage with the community, look at my – and then my daughter starts, like, hitting me with a foam noodle. And I'm like, stop it. Stop it. Go, <laughs> yeah. go over there. And so I go back to what I'm doing on my phone. Two seconds later, she hits my leg with her with a skateboard. I'm like, "Stop it! What are you doing?" And I go back to go back to my phone and I'm browsing Facebook, doing something. And then three seconds later, a ball hits me in the head, and I and I and I get up like I'm I'm frustrated, I'm upset. But then I realize mm -hmm. that she just needs attention. Yeah, she, she's just she's just bored. She wants to be with her dad, and so I put the I put my phone down, and I, and I gave her the attention that she needed. And then it was a miracle. 
I wasn't frustrated anymore. I wasn't yeah. getting hit with things anymore. And it's just, a, it's these small types of things I think that separate acted dads apart from, 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 from the rest. Right. So it's really just being conscious, being conscientious, being, but conscious and like in a mindful present type of awareness, because yeah, our attention is like, there's so much noise. There's so much noise. And we, and, and there's a lot of chemicals going on in our brains that go, oh, I need to pick up my phone because I get a boost of serotonin and dopamine, you know, all these kinds of things. Right. And, and it's like, but we neglect the fact that we're going to get those hits every time we have, we bond with our kids or our, our spouses, you know, like we're going to get a hit of serotonin and endorphins and, and all of those things, those good things that are going to keep us coming back for more. But it's like, because those other things like the phone and distraction and all those kinds of things are so uh, more tempting, I guess, or maybe I think that because they give us a stronger jolt, so it's more addicting, right? Well, that they're psychologically exactly developed for that for that there it's intentional marketers yes. and yes. creators of these things have intentionally made it so that we want to keep coming back for more we want to keep right. you know that funny show on youtube or whatever like it gives us that those those hits of the the chemicals in our brains that keep us coming back right but it's like wow if we could just pause and go wait a minute I get the same chemical hits when I laugh with my kids and they tell a joke one of my kids has a his humor is so on point and it's like where does he come up with this stuff and uh, we love it you know uh, but i wouldn't know that if i didn't take the time to like or when we're talking and and he just throws out a joke or something you got to be able right. to i heard an interesting time. statistic the other day that kind of blew me away and i hope i don't botch it here but <laughs> basically the way this this stat goes is that 80% of the one on one time that you have with your kid will be done between ages zero and 12. So from 12 on, most of your one-on-one -on -one time is, is going to be done. So right. if you're not present now, my friend, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss the boat. And, and I definitely don't want to regret waking up when I'm 65 and being like, wow, I wish I would have gone on that camping trip. I wish I would have coached the little league team. I, I refuse to let that be my, my story. Yeah. Wow. So that, that brings to mind, you know, more, more of this idea I want to know because of, of the time management aspect of things. I think that people go, I know I should be doing these things, but there's so many things vying for my time and attention. Mm -hmm. and, and so then you get the guilt, the regret, you know, all those kinds of things. So maybe that comes back to this idea of how do we create something that then gives us more time? Maybe. Yeah. Well, I'm going to, I'm actually speaking at a conference next week in, uh, in February at the dad 2.0 conference about this topic, about time mm -hmm. management, because I think it's probably one of the, the most important, most challenging things to get right in, in your midlife time, right? I'm yeah. 37. Um, it's tough. It's tough, yeah. but I, I think that there's a few things you need to do. A, you need to be clear on what your goals are. So if you're listening to a show like this, you're probably clear on it. I want to spend quality time with my kids. I want to develop a, a good family culture. So, okay, cool. We got that. We got that clear. So what are distractions that aren't directly contributing to that? Right? So TV yeah. is a big one. TV, TV is a big one. Going out with friends to things that might not, might not be in line with what your goals are. Um, maybe you have a, a job that's taking up 80 hours of your work week, right? So you, you start to kind of audit what, what you're spending your time on and how relevant it is. And, and I think that's kind of where I landed on starting a podcast, starting a large Facebook community. And it's just kind of developed from there. Um, but I, I can say that one of the, the apps that I use that I think you use also is Calendly. And that's just changed my life. It's, it's, yeah. it's been, it's someone who's hosting Schedule interviews and scheduling. So, oh, it's, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Yeah. It's worth, worth every, every dollar. Um, so that's, that's a nice tip there. Um, but just, I think also and again, being clear with yourself and then communicating yeah. with those around you. I've been married for over five years. I've been with my wife for over 12 now. And before I started all this, I sat down, I talked to her, I said, look, I don't want to snap at, at random waitresses at, at the Chinese restaurant. I, I want to spend quality time with you. I want to be happy. I want to have a financial future. I, I want to develop this lifestyle of never retire. I had someone ask me on a live show. My, my wife and I do 
a live date night show once a week on Friday nights because I want to create content for my guests, for my, mm -hmm. my audience, but I also want to find time to be with my wife. Yeah. So that's been tremendously rewarding is that date night live show. It's been so much fun. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Basically, we just go on for a half hour, nine o'clock every Friday night, Eastern. And we just answer flashcards. We have a real conversation with each other and we incorporate the audience. It's, it's, been, it's been amazingly rewarding. So it's things like that. Again, finding ways to bring your family into what you're doing. Yeah. And it's just, it's just kind, of, it's kind of been a really fun process. I love that you said, you know, make sure you're setting your intention beforehand. You know, right. having, that was one of the things that I think that what I realized from ex experimenting and studying about family culture is that you can't have an intentional family culture unless you sit down and you plan out what that's going to look like, what that, what your family means to you, where you want to go with your family and having the strategy, if not whole, totally mapped out, at least partially mapped out of where you want to go, what you want to accomplish and be intentional about it and then state right. those intentions. Yeah. If you don't communicate that with your partner, your partner's going to be like my husband or, or wife or my spouse is spending four to five hours every night locked in their home office. I feel lonely. I feel like I'm being neglected. Yeah. Yeah. You have to communicate that up front and have conversations regularly afterwards. Yeah. Again, one of the reasons why I started date night live, I wanted to bring her in. I didn't want to spend Friday nights locked in my office. I wanted to, to spend some time with her. That's really cool. Like I had this conversation with somebody recently, how uh, she and her husband were trying to launch a business or a course or something like that. And so she was feeling kind of guilty because she was spending extra time working on this product before they could launch it, even though knowing that when it was done, they would have more time right afterwards. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, oh, I feel so guilty. I never see my kids and they, they complain they're not around. And I was like, well, you know, all you have to do is set an intention. If you tell them, look, for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be extra busy. Let's work together to support each other through this until it's done, you know? Right. And then it becomes a family goal that even though you're working hard on this thing and you're less, maybe a little less present, you know that you set that intention and that there's a deadline and it's going to end at some point. And right. then it's going to have this reward at the end of it. Right. And it was like, I know how powerful that is to just set an intention, an intention, make a statement with your family, get everybody involved. And then everybody's got buy-in. Nobody's going, oh, mom's never around. Dad's never around because of this and that. Well, dad is really actually just working on this thing for, or this is the project that he's working on, or this is this time of the week or the day that he's set aside for this thing. And when he's done, we'll be back, you know? Yeah. But also setting aside specific time that this is family time. This is not, yes. I'm checking my cell phone. I'm not doing, I'm not scheduling interviews during this time. Basically all day Saturday is family day. And then at night, uh, I have a date night with my wife every Saturday night. So Friday night is the, is the show that we do. And then Saturday night is just her and I sitting down communicating. So yeah. so yeah, but being, again, when you're intentional about what you want, you can say, I want to have my kids feel like they're loved and they have plenty of attention. Saturday is zoo day. It's beach day. It's biking day. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we also tried to do, we're on a break from it because we just recently moved, but we're going to get back to it. No, we do family uh, date nights with mommy, daddy date night. So it's one-on-one. -on -one. Oh. And so it's like, yeah. you know, as I was going to say is like, yeah, you like we were on the same wavelength because I was just going to be like, but you need to make sure you set intentions for your family too. And one of the things we do, like you said, you have date night with your spouse and we, you know, I think it's important also to have date nights with your children to have the one-on-one -on -one time with them. Absolutely. Anyway, have you ever, with, do, do you do stuff like that? Oh yeah, for sure. And I just want to comment that, you know, the new place looks beautiful. If for, if for anyone that's not watching this on YouTube, there is a spectacular <laughs> view behind Jody. Yeah. So you definitely want to check that out. It's, it's really cool. It's really cool. Thanks for that, Mark. It's, a, it's totally a drop cloth, but. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, there, but it works. It worked. Wow. Yeah. It was like, an, it's either a, a white wall or a drop cloth. And uh, no, we actually live in a super uh, rural place. <laughs> I say you're like in the middle of Manhattan, 35th floor. Just it's, it's, it's a drop cloth. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, cool. it's uh, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, that, you guys got to check it out on YouTube so you can, you can yeah, see what you I'm totally saying. And, 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 and mention in the comments what you think, because to me, it, it looks like a window. So I don't know. 
uh, <laughs> at any rate, uh, we got a little off topic there. So, um, yeah, as far as, so date night or, um, dates with your kids. Yeah. Uh, my eight month old still pretty young. Right. So, uh, that, that one-on-one -on -one time is still important, but yeah. when I had my second kid, I was talking to someone about this yesterday. When I had my second child, one of my concerns was that, well, now 100% of my energy and my attention that was going towards my older daughter is now being split. Cause yeah. I want my son to have a piece of my action, a piece of the action. Yep. And so I, you know, I typically bring them out together. Smiling a lot helps avoid yelling. Um, yeah. But then, yeah, I, I definitely take my daughter out places one-on-one. -on -one. So you take her to the zoo one-on-one, cool. -on -one, take her to the beach one-on-one, -on -one, bike trips. Those, those are the things that I, I really yeah. enjoy. Well, and as you establish those routines and, and your son gets older, as he grows up, he's going to, you'll have those routines in place. So it'll be easier to integrate yeah you know, that it meant, it means something to them. So yeah. I don't know how parents with five or six or seven kids do it, to be honest. It, yeah. <laughs> let me know. I want to know. A lot of grace, a lot of grace. I think I have four kids and we do, um, you know, we try to set up the date night thing and then we do like nightly prayers with each of them individually. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that if you, if you, um, set too high of expectations, then you start to get more of that guilt, right? That mm. it's just kind of unnecessary. I think that as long as you know, at some point you have, like you said, being conscious when you're going, when you're being distracted, put down your phone and that one child is get, vying for your attention. Well, give it to them. You know, right. if you get, if you give them that one-on-one -on -one time in the moment when they're like frustrated or extra tender and cuddly or whatever it is, you know, then you're going to get that one-on-one -on -one time with them. And, I do think, and, yeah. I, I do think that guilt is a good thing though, I, it, to an extent, like you don't want guilt to overwhelm you or, yeah. or let other people put guilt on you. But I think guilt is, can be a really positive thing. I, again, I'm, I'm launching another show, the lifestyle savant show, because I have a lot of people that ask me about podcasting and digital media and building community so the lifestyle savant is, is starting to manifest itself via YouTube and podcast at some point. But I talked about this the other day that I think guilt is good. There are days where I, I sleep in too late. Like maybe I sleep until 10 o'clock, for example, and I wake up, I'm like, ugh, yeah. these are two hours that I could have been productive. Yeah. Right? yeah. Or I eat, you know, I have a goal of losing 10 pounds, but I end up eating like garbage. I go for that second cookie or, or, or cupcake and I feel guilty afterward. That guilt is a good thing. That guilt is there to tell you, right. You, you, you're, you're, you're Make getting a off change. target here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I completely agree. Sometimes I, um, you know, I, I, I have an episode somewhere in my back catalog called the difference between dis divine discontent and, uh, and like, just self self deprecation, right? Like yeah. there's a difference yes. when you feel guilty. There is like this motivation going, Oh, this doesn't sit right with me. And, and also when you feel those, feel that guilt and you feel that sensation of something is not right. That's really your, your internal, your core values and your core principles sending you a message, right? This is not, this is not in alignment with our values or your personal values. It's time to make a change. Right. So you're right. I agree with you. Like if you have that sensation, then you're going, whoa, something's not in alignment with my values. I need to make a change. I need to make a shift towards those values because, you know, sometimes people ask like, how do I know what my core values are? Or how do I know what's important to me? Well, listen, <laughs> Yeah. listen to yourself. Yeah. And don't listen to others. Other people, when other people try to push guilt on you because you circumcised your kid or you let them stay <laughs> up too late or you took them out of school to go to the local museum. Don't let other people put guilt on you. You establish yeah. what's important to you. And when you feel guilty and internally, you listen to yourself. But we live in a world where there's so much outside noise, especially in the mommy groups. My wife will show me some of these posts in these mommy groups. I'm like, what the heck? Like, yeah. like you know, and that's one of the things that's really important to me with the acted ad community, I have, I have a pretty large group on Facebook is that, you know, we're not here to judge because there's no one right yeah. way to do this. We're here to support, answer questions, inspire one another. So. Yeah. That's why I think that this, my, this whole idea of family culture, establishing what's important for your family, every family has right. its own culture and be intentional about what that is. You know, with my family, we are like, uh, we are anti 
about everything. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we homeschool <laughs> our kids and, you know, we, we, uh, you know, there's, and we do a uh, home business, everything. So we are like against the grain and about everything. And, and if I constantly was, you know, comparing myself to other people who send their kids off to school or their dad works so many hours or mom works so many hours a day at, off at a job, then I would be confused. It would be really right. frustrating, you know? So it's really important that everybody just figure out, listen to yourself, what your core value is telling you when you feel guilt. And if you are watching somebody, you're comparing yourself to your, to them, listen to that too. I mean, I think that there is sometimes a message going, why does that make me feel jealous? Or why does that make me feel guilty? Is it simply just vanity or is there something deeper on a deeper level there? Also, yeah, I I, I, and, and learn, learn from others. Like I said, that's, that's probably right. one of the, the, the premier goals that I have with the Awesome Dad Show. It's not to tell you how to do stuff, but yeah. Yeah, this is what other people are doing. I interviewed uh, NFL quarterback Trent Dilfer a few months ago, and we, we started talking about, hey, how do you change from being your, your kid's coach to being a listener? Because sometimes it's really just about listening. It's not about telling them yeah. what to do as fathers, I feel like we always want to fix everything. Oh, my daughter has a problem with, we want to fix that. But, but sometimes it's about listening. And so what he worked out with his daughter, which I thought was really profound was his daughter will, so he has a hat in his car that he puts on his dashboard. Uh, when he takes his daughter to school, when his daughter which wants to, to talk to him, he's got, doesn't have his hat on. He's, he's a listener, right? Mm. He's a, he's nice. a, He's a listener. And then when she says she wants help or she wants his advice, she asks him to put his coaching hat on. He puts his coach hat on. And that's when he goes into coach mode. So it's, it's about kind of balancing what your, what your kids need, if yeah. you would. And that's something that I, I definitely plan to establish. Right now, my daughter is three and a half, so I have to tell her how to do everything. <laughs> Otherwise, she'd probably be dead. Um, <laughs> but I, I think that it's, it's little tidbits like that that, can, that you, you yeah. should take little pieces that, that can help you just be better. That's awesome. I love that so much because that's something that I make like making a shift towards with my brand is this idea of uh, culture hacking that it's yeah. like, okay, look at the life hacks of people who are, who are thriving or successful or the little things that they do, like putting on the coach's hat. Hey, we can hack that. Let's pick that up as something that we can do and model that for ourselves because right. you see that as something that that's working and is in alignment with your values. So let's try it. You know, discipline is another that. one. Disciplining is yeah. hard. Yeah. Kids respond differently. I'm not here to judge people if they spank or don't spank or time out. But what we've had some success with, albeit moderate, because toddlers are, are a whirlwind of emotion. But one thing that we've had success with is just something as simple as a starboard. We have a, a starboard. So right. when they do something good, they get a star and then they get a, a gift. She gets a gift at the end of the week. And mm -hmm. by, by switching the mindset from you're going to be punished for doing this, we switch the mindset you're going to be rewarded for, for doing yeah. this. And that's been successful. Now, sometimes punishment has to happen. Um, so we, we tend to lean towards doing a timeout. Mm -hmm. But again, there's, there's all sorts of different strategies. But again, that's one of the things that, that's been really rewarding about the Awesome Dad Show is, is learning what other dads yeah. are doing. Growing yeah. up, it was just kind of about, you're going to get a whooping from dad. Yeah. I, I don't... I'm not a huge fan of that because it really feels crappy to, to, to smack your kid. It feels so crappy. Do not yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, I love that you've been able to recognize like, okay, this is kind of, I wouldn't say like toxic is kind of a strong word, but there are toxic patterns that we've grown up with that I think it's important to examine, take inventory of them and, and, or like you said, like audit those things so that you can decide like, okay, what are the habits that I want to adopt and carry over into our family? And what are the ones that I just want to leave in the past? <laughs> yeah. So what makes you feel guilty? If you, if you're spanking your kid and you feel like crap afterwards, there might be a better way. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There might be a better wow. way. I remember growing up, there was this time, I'll never forget this. My, my brother and I, my younger brother and I were having an argument or fight. So I, I don't know exactly how this happened, but I went into my, my dad's closet. He was in the Navy and he was a CB in the Navy and he had this decorative sword. And so I got out the sword. I was always fascinated with this sword. It was just really decorative and pretty. It was really cool. And I was, we were playing with the sword and my brother decided that he was upset with me. And I said, and I pointed the sword right at him. I said, don't you take another step forward. 
He took another step forward. I'm like, I'm not putting my hand down. I'm not going to do it. And he walked right into the sword. <gasps> I got in trouble, obviously, uh, yeah. <laughs> because I, I, I stabbed my brother with a, a Navy sword. Um, so I got in trouble, but instead of getting whooped or, or terrible spankings, I had to write essays. And <laughs> essay writing will clean you up quick, my friends. <laughs> you get your kids <laughs> writing essays, they will learn quickly. <laughs> That's so, a good strategy, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. You learned your lesson. Oh yeah, and it, it, you, you, you learn life skills, but mostly you learn, I, I don't want to misbehave because I don't want to write essays. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Mark, this has been really great talking with you and, and I love this conversation. Love this, what you're doing with Awesome Dad, Active Dad. And so where can we find you? Where can we connect more with what, what you're doing? Absolutely. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to be here, Jody. It's been a lot of fun. I love the New York ambiance. Um, <laughs> You can find me all across the internet. The Act of Dad platform is on every social media platform. I'm on YouTube. I'm on podcast. And that's Act of Dad, like active and dad put together, Act of Dad. And Lifestyle Savant is basically a way of documenting my journey to building Act of Dad. I've now gotten to this point where people are asking me on a daily basis, how do you start a podcast? How do you do an interview? How are you how are you producing so much content in balancing all and balancing your family life? So lifestyle savant is, uh, it's being fleshed out now, but you can find me on Facebook, YouTube, and that's a way Instagram. And that, that's a way of kind of documenting how I'm creating the awesome dad show, how I'm creating cool. act to dad, how I'm leveraging virtual assistants and calendars and apps and all these different tech technological processes. Technology is not a bad thing. It's, it's here to be used as a tool. As, yeah. as you are very well aware of. And if yeah. you use technology appropriately, it can be very powerful in liberating you to spend time with your family. Very cool. Wow. Thank you so much. I just want to acknowledge what you're doing. It's really awesome. And that, you know, we need more good, solid quality voices out here supporting our families, supporting dads, especially, you know, because I think that it's a, it's like dads become like minority message or something out there. You know, I think that yeah. it's really important to, to hear a supportive voice for dads and knowing that dads are so crucial for our children to grow up, to thrive, to be self-confident, to be resilient. We need our dads. So thank you so much, Mark. Absolutely. I also want to just add here, thank Jody, that in order for moms to grow up, to be successful in the workplace and to be successful and to achieve their dreams, it's going to take dads. Dads got to step up. So we can, I think it's all about working together in harmony and lifting each Balance. other up rather than, yeah, lift each other up. Don't step on each other's back. Amen to that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Jody.